Hello and greetings from Iceland, but this is not one of the regular updates for the Reykjanes Peninsula, since uh, nothing much seems to be happening there at the moment on the surface, but under there is another story, and we are diving into that today. And I will be showing you some of the footage that I've been uh, shooting lately, but sadly I didn't get the monster in the lake on film this time, but uh, we are talking about uh, Lake Klevarvatn located in the middle of the Reykjanes Peninsula, less than 20 kilometers away from Geldingadalir, where the famous eruption took place. And uh, I've said it before, Lake Klevarvatn deserves its own video, and we start on this map. This will be our first camera angle as we face the capital region, and note that we are now located on the Krisuvik volcanic system, or the system that uh, most of us believed that uh, would go off first due to the constant uh, seismic unrest around there for decades. So the location at Geldingadalir came actually as a surprise. And uh, since the Geldingadalir eruption started, things have not been getting any better around here. That's for sure. So let's take a look at the lake. But this is one of the deepest uh, lakes in Iceland most of the time since uh, it varies considerably in size during the year, and we notice uh, other changes during longer cycles as well. The water level is believed to be controlled uh, mostly by changes in groundwater levels, but uh, there is also no visible inflow source to the lake, nor are there any rivers running from it. So there has always been a certain mystery surrounding the lake and uh, its uh, existence. So we start with the location. The region is uh, well known for its uh, geothermal and uh, seismic unrest and this uh, very weird landscape on the youngest part of Iceland where uh, Mother Earth is uh, still in the making. The landscape is dominated by a row of uh, active volcanoes that uh, run along the uh, lake's uh, length from uh, southwest to northeast, like all the tougher mountains and mountain ridges around here. And uh, we can see how extremely close we are to the capital region. The fissure swarm from this system goes all the way into the city. And uh, we tend to build our houses just by the fissures. So we zoom in now, and we are going to look back from the other end. We are located now in this new building area in Hafnarfjörður, the part of the capital area that uh, we enter first then we drive to Reykjavík from the Keflavík International Airport. And uh, if you ask me, this is the worst building land idea that we have ever had here in Iceland. And the lava around here came from the Krisuvík volcanic system with its uh, many volcanoes who now are waiting for their chance to wake up just above the capital area. And I did make a video about this uh, junkyard slash building land shortly after the Geldingadalir eruption started because I had a bad feeling about this place right from the beginning. And uh, I still have a older video on my channel about this part of the Reykjavik area and I'm linking to it. And uh, what makes this piece of land so interesting is that uh, during uh, historic times lava has flowed here four times under the new houses around. And uh, in fact, I do have material for many episodes just covering the volcanoes around the city. But uh, this might just be the worst case scenario, man-made scenario. And uh, back to Lake Klevervatn. And this will now be the angle from a map. And we can see a bit of the south coast from here. And between the south coast and Reykjavík, there are more dangers waiting around the corner. Or the sulfur mountains. This is where the largest earthquakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula occur every 50 years or so, and the sulfur mountains are due. The next big one could strike at any moment, but note that we are lucky in a way, since Iceland is a very young country, and the rock is therefore not as hard as elsewhere in the world. So the largest earthquakes are around uh, magnitude 7, and even lower on the Reykjanes Peninsula, the geological infant of Iceland. But this is though the largest mass 
of uh, Lavarok that uh, we have on the peninsula or a shield volcano formation and all this uh, volume of lava might be the reason that the largest earthquakes on the peninsula occur here making this city a masterpiece of bad city planning that started with our forefathers but uh, Lake Klevavatn stands for more than just volcanoes it is a tourist stopover that offers uh, very little information except around the hot springs but we have and I've said this before, somehow never learned to appreciate the land around here, or should we say respect it. For me, this is one of the places with this certain type of magnetism to it, and not just from the remarkable geology all around. According to folklore, a whale-like monster lives in a lake, but uh, I've not met it myself, and the tourists who did they are no longer with us to tell the story. And then we had this earthquake in the year 2000 under the lake. And the lake drained over 20% of its surface area. And that same thing happened after an earthquake in 1663. But the water level in the lake has recovered now for the most part. But that seismic event did however reveal new hot springs in the corner of the lake, hot springs that we would enjoy for a few years, but they are under water now, as the lake is recovering. And the training of Klevervatn did inspire the Icelandic author Arnaldur Indriðason to write this crime fiction titled after the lake, Klevervatn, where the receding waters uncovered a body long hidden beneath the surface. So there is a good chance to get to know the Icelandic crime fictions, but the English translation is called The Draining Lake, and it is a good book. Painters and filmmakers have also been inspired around here, and overall it's one of the places you have to be at to understand, or try to understand. And back to the map, and I'm locating the camera here now, just above the Green Lake, but we have two Explosion craters there. This is the smaller one called uh, Geststadavatn. And to the left of the crater, we have a rehabilitation center for uh, drug users. And they say it's a very powerful therapy that's going on there, just by the crater. And the second crater is a Lake Grænavatn, Green Lake. And I'm pretty sure that the explosion there woke up a number of people in Iceland or Europe. And it is a strange fact that tells its own story that there isn't even an Icelandic Wikipedia page covering the remarkable Green Lake that is 45 meter deep. Also considered to be one of the most noteworthy formations around here, but the hot springs are getting all the coverage. The main story though should be those explosion craters as I look at it from marketing value, but uh, it's easier to find a hot spring than a toilet around here. So you can just guess what uh, some of the tourists do about that. And between the explosion craters and the lake, we have this landscape that's hard to find elsewhere on our earth. The lake used to cover some of this land until the 1663 earthquake. And up on this hill, we have yet another large uh, hot spring. The lake itself is surrounded by tough mountains and sits on a depression. But again, that's about it when it comes to the existence of the lake. I hoped to see the internet crowded with uh, geological reports about how the lake came into being. But uh, as sometimes before, I was a bit optimistic there. And I would for sure like to know more, especially since it's a steep uh, depression that forms the bottom of the lake. And could this be an uh, explosion crater as well, like the others around? And uh, has the water drainage from a lake something to do with the hot springs around? Perhaps the Green Lake crater? But it's believed that it was formed when groundwater was heated up, leading to this uh, huge explosion that uh, left us with this uh, crater. But the lake is on the tectonic plate boundaries and uh, earthquakes are very common around here and most of them occur uh, here in front of the lake 
where the new hot springs are located. But again, to the bigger picture, even closer to Reykjavik, we have yet another tough mountain called the Helgafell. Earthquakes are frequent around there, but it's a popular hiking area. And just behind it, we have a crater called Burfellsgjá. One of the nasty ones, but we wish that uh, was located further away from the capital region. And it is a crater that deserves a video of its own, that's uh, coming soon. And now I'm at the northeast end of the lake, from where it's only 10 minutes drive into the city. And we can see the dried up lake, where the ice is. We won't go fishing there for a while. But there is, however, good fishing in the rest of the lake. And you can buy a fishing cart that allows you to fish in this lake and 35 other lakes for one price. Tourist tip of the day. And finally, I'm turning my camera west toward Mount Keilir and Geldingadalir. And we see that all the mountains around there are lined up in the same direction by the fracture zone. And we are simply on the mid-Atlantic ridge, where it is above sea level, entering a new chapter with frequent eruptions on the peninsula for the next 800 years or so. And here we have Faradarsfjall, by many considered to be a separate volcanic system than the one that we are on now. But it is hard to note uh, any difference, especially since uh, there are always earthquakes in this zone between those two systems, overlapping each other in front of us. But then, our scientists have never before had such a chance to investigate this region from this uh, ongoing events, so I'm very sure that uh, our experts will learn a lot from this one. And uh, I do already have more videos of this kind in the making, or where I cover certain areas when uh, ongoing eruptions or earthquakes are not playing with my focus. And I want to use uh, this kind of videos to use on my channel to link to when I'm not doing my uh, regular news related updates. It can save me time and bring you closer, faster and better when and if something new comes up. So, it's just a part of my database, if we can say so. And finally, also about the database, I want to remind my viewers that I am currently making another series of videos covering all Icelandic towns and villages. And uh, not just the fun and uh, nice towns, I'm also going to cover the dull and ugly towns that the tourist board uh, doesn't want you to know about. And with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.